When we think of ancient Egypt, images of the mighty pyramids, the fabled sphinx, and ancient temples immediately spring to mind. What we mustn't forget, however, with all the world-famous buildings from the age of the pharaohs, is the fact that Egypt still has many secrets that have always been waiting to be discovered. What if we told you that there's a hidden labyrinth in Egypt that easily dwarfs even the mighty pyramid of Cheops in size and splendor? What initially sounds like an exciting but fictional myth becomes all the more astonishing when we take a look at the millennia-old sources that tell of such a maze. We'll now show you what this legendary complex is all about in detail and how archaeologists might one day be able to track down the lost labyrinth. Before we get started, be sure to hit the like button and ring the notification bell for more videos. Also, stick around until the end to learn just how old this fabled labyrinth may be and some of the secrets about its supposed location. The Lost Labyrinth Admittedly, the claim that there's a gigantic hidden labyrinth in Egypt seems extremely daring at first glance. However, those who are convinced of the authenticity of this theory don't refer to their wild imagination, but to some contemporary reports. Above all, it's the explanations of the Greek historian Herodotus that have fueled the labyrinth thesis for many centuries. Herodotus once told of a building that was mightier than anything he'd ever seen before. In fact, the historian claimed that all the edifices of his people put together were less magnificent than that labyrinth. Even the breathtaking pyramids are nothing compared to this imposing complex. In detail, this oversized temple is said to have had more than 3,000 rooms. Far from simple rooms, these were places decorated with stunning paintings and intricate hieroglyphs. Admittedly, the reports of a single historian do not yet provide indisputable proof of the actual existence of such a facility. In truth, however, Herodotus was far from the only historian who immortalized the labyrinth in his explanations. The ancient writers Strabo, Manetho, Pomponius Mela, and Diodorus Siculus were also deeply impressed by the size and splendor of the labyrinth. Nevertheless, we find the most detailed descriptions of the building in Herodotus' histories. The only surviving historical work of the ancient Greeks consists of nine books that were written in the 5th century BC. Herodotus explains that the complex has 12 courtyards and six gates each on the north and south sides. The entire building is framed by a gigantic connected wall. Regarding the more than 3,000 chambers, the historian says that they're divided into two types, underground and above-ground rooms. The historian saw the upper rooms with his own eyes, but he only heard about the underground chambers. For Herodotus, a visit to the complex was tantamount to an overwhelming dream journey. Each individual chamber in its own way offered cause for awe. Covering the labyrinth was a massive stone roof, which, like the walls, was bristling with carved decorations. Each of the twelve courtyards was surrounded by brilliant white columns. At the end of the labyrinth was another pyramid, 40 fathoms tall, which could be reached via an underground passage. For clarification, the historical length and area of measurement of fathoms corresponds to the span between the outstretched arms of an adult man. Transferred to our modern dimensions, a fathom measured about 1.8 meters. Further Descriptions as already mentioned, Herodotus was in good company in his accounts of the magnificent labyrinth, even if the explanations of his ancient colleagues were not nearly as detailed. It's still worth taking a closer look at the corresponding descriptions. The Greek historian and geographer Strabo, who was born around 63 BC, also claimed to have seen the complex with his own eyes. He said that there were hidden chambers in front of the gates of the labyrinth. These were as large as they were numerous. In addition, the individual corridors were laid out so intricately that it was 
impossible for a stranger to find their way around without the help of a guide. The Roman geographer Pomponius Mela is also one of the historical personalities who provided information about the unique complex. The same is true of the Roman scholar Pliny the Elder, who described the structure as a bewildering labyrinth of paths. The Greek historian Diodorus Siculus, on the other hand, presented himself as somewhat more artistic. He wrote, As soon as one entered the sacred complex, one found a temple framed by forty pillars on each side. The structure had a single stone roof covered with panels and decorated with stunning paintings. It contained memories of each king's homeland, as well as the temples and sacrifices performed there. Particularly noteworthy is the fact that all the descriptions of the labyrinths by the various historians agree in essence and in many details. Given this fact, it seems likely to some experts that the site was not just a fictional legend, but a place that actually existed at one time. Suppose then that the historians told us the truth in their accounts. If this is the case, a fundamental question immediately arises. Where is the complex located, and why has no archaeologist been able to track it down so far? On the Trail of the Riddle if you follow the impressive descriptions of Herodotus and company, then the ancient Egyptian labyrinth must undoubtedly have been one of the most impressive buildings of all time. Conversely, shouldn't the researchers do their utmost to rediscover this architectural masterpiece? Well, the answer to that question is, some of them are already doing it. This includes in particular the Mataha Expedition, a scientific undertaking that has set itself the goal of bringing the time-honored labyrinth myth back to reality. This endeavor should be accomplished through the use of the most modern technologies of our time. The first task was to pinpoint the location of the long-lost labyrinth as precisely as possible. In order for this to succeed, the members of the Mataha expedition relied on the information that Herodotus made in this regard. He described that the complex was located slightly above Lake Moiris and opposite the city of the crocodiles. The mentioned locality is in all probability the city of Al-Fayyum, which in Greek is called Crocodilopolis. And indeed, south of Al-Fayyum, there is an exciting archaeological site, the tomb of the ancient Egyptian king Amenemhat III. The heart of this exciting necropolis is the Hawara Pyramid. Construction of the pyramid, which was once 58 meters high and 105 meters wide, began in the 15th year of the pharaoh's reign. And as is well known, the ancient historians described that the magnificent labyrinth led straight to such a tomb. In modern times, the structure was first documented in 1839, but the first attempts to penetrate the interior of the pyramid were not to be crowned with success. Nevertheless, the researchers of that time already managed to salvage some exciting ruins, which were later actually identified as the remains of a labyrinth. From 1888, the English archaeologist Flinders Petrie devoted himself to the detailed investigation of the Hawara necropolis. At first, he focused on the surrounding cemeteries, before a year later he was able to penetrate into the belly of the pyramid. In the years that followed, however, Petrie worked on a few other projects, and it was not until 1911 that he returned to Hawara. Now it was finally time for the researcher and his team to examine the hidden labyrinth in its full size and nature. After the excavations that were then carried out, however, great disillusionment spread among the ranks of the archaeologists. At this point, the complex was already so badly damaged that it was no longer possible to reconstruct its original appearance. It's widely believed that the ruins discovered may have been the labyrinth's foundations. But what if Petrie and his people were wrong about this? We remember, ancient historians such as Herodotus and Strabo reported that the complex had a massive stone roof. Therefore, some people think it's conceivable that the found foundation was in fact not the base, but the top cover of the structure. If you follow this exciting assumption, the actual labyrinth could still be slumbering undiscovered in the ground. The members of the Mahara expedition also wanted to check what this assumption is all about. 
To get to the bottom of the mystery, they used ground-penetrating radar. In this way, the researchers were able to study the site without damaging it. Equipped with a special permit, the trackers set out in 2008 to finally shed some light on this great historical darkness. And indeed, at a depth of about 10 meters, the researchers came across an extensive site that has huge chambers, large halls, and meter-thick walls. They also managed to identify a massive lattice-like structure, probably made of granite. The experts then published their exciting research results in a specialist journal and presented them in a lecture at the University of Ghent. In light of this exciting find, the fact that the site hasn't been explored since 2008 seems all the more puzzling. One can currently only speculate as to why this is the case. Unfortunately, this is where our journey into the historic labyrinth ends. No further research has been carried out and thus no further discoveries have ever been made. At least, not yet. Lost Golden City Aside from the impending discovery of the lost Egyptian labyrinth, if we turn back the Wheel of Time by around 3,400 years, we find ourselves in an epic that still puzzles experts to this day. At that time, the pharaoh Akhenaten decided to give up his religion and the former capital in Thebes in order to found the city of Akhetaten and become the city's ruler. There, he ruled together with his wife Nefertiti and founded a mysterious sun cult. But what motives could have led the pharaoh to take such a drastic step? The answer to this riddle may be hidden in the ruins of the legendary Golden City, which were rediscovered in September 2020. In light of the astonishingly good state of preservation in which the remains of the magnificent village were found, the entire professional world went into a frenzy upon this discovery. In fact, experts have called the discovery of the city ruins the biggest sensation since the discovery of Tutankhamun's tomb. In detail, the Golden City was built during the reign of Akhenaten's father, Amenhotep III. That epic describes a chapter in which ancient Egypt was in a real heyday. This was a time of extraordinary luxury, wealth, and power. Although the investigation of the site is still in full swing, researchers have already uncovered some incredible artifacts. Jewelry, amulets, ceramics, and countless everyday objects give a foreshadowing of the priceless treasures that may yet lie within the remains of the Golden City. But the buildings also give us an authentic insight into everyday life at the time. According to this, the archaeologists have already found houses that may have once been occupied by workers, a kitchen, a bakery, administration buildings, and even a burial ground with burial chambers carved directly into the rock. After Akhenaten had turned his back on the flourishing town, for whatever reason, the Golden City later seemed to have been used again by Tutankhamun at some point during history. The subsequent ruler must have valued the city, which represented the prosperity of his empire so well. In fact, some findings suggest that the town was inhabited until the 7th century AD. The city was then left to its own devices for many centuries, before it recently saw the light of day again. Sensational Finds in Saqqara if we look at everyday life of the ancient Egyptians, one central aspect must not be neglected. The pronounced burial cult of the inhabitants of the Pharaonic Kingdom. Hardly any other site is as representative as the ancient necropolis of Saqqara when it comes to gaining an authentic insight into the elaborate burial rites of important ancient Egyptian personalities. According to this, the famous UNESCO World Heritage Site houses, among other things, the oldest pyramid in the world, the Djoser Pyramid. Even today, new secrets are regularly salvaged from the tombs of the necropolis. One of the most groundbreaking finds in recent history was the discovery of the tomb of a queen who died around 4,200 years ago. For a long time, however, experts could only speculate about the true identity of the ruler. But a few months ago, the breakthrough finally came. The researchers discovered the name of the queen carved on a wall of the mortuary temple. So, we now know that this is Nate, the wife of Pharaoh Teti. 
The fact that the experts had never heard of this name before reminds us of the importance of such discoveries for general history. No less spectacular was the recent find of 50 wooden sarcophagi and the discovery of a large limestone sarcophagus. Saqqara's archaeological treasures also include a mysterious papyrus scroll that explains in detail how the soul of a deceased person can reach the afterlife. Alright folks, now it's your turn. What do you think of the exciting historical accounts that tell us about the splendor of the lost labyrinth? Let us know your thoughts, suggestions, and feedback on today's post in the comments below. If you're already there, please give our video a thumbs up and subscribe to stay up to date from now on. Are you interested in more exciting articles about the greatest mysteries in history? Then finally take a look at the other videos of our channel, which you can access by clicking on one of the pictures here in the credits. Thank you for watching, have a good one, and see you next time.